creating indie games, as I'm sure you know, has a huge amount of good times attached to it, but there can also be some annoying times. What's up guys, it's John, and today we're going to be covering 5 things you should know before developing your indie game. Hoping this video will help you skip through some of the more annoying times during development. Starting off at number 5. Purchasing assets is great, but don't expect them to create your indie game for you. So I feel like a lot of game developers fall into this trap, and it's when you have all these things you want to include in your game, so you go out and buy a load of assets, thinking you can stick them together like Legos, and you have your game complete. But in reality, this isn't quite the case. So I'm talking more about program systems like inventory systems, combat systems, etc. These assets are usually made by people with years of experience, so when you decide to buy one, it's usually quite overwhelming to understand at first. Then if you don't fully understand the first system you buy, and you go out and purchase another system to combine with the first one, you get completely lost. So I'm not saying don't go out and buy lots of cool assets, because assets really are awesome, just take into account how complex the asset is, and try and understand one system before attempting to combine it with another system. Or you might find yourself paying someone to combine the assets for you. Number 4. Grey boxing will save you heaps of time. So this tip is one I could have done with when starting my indie game, as I wasted a huge amount of time not using grey boxing. And if you don't know what grey boxing is, it's basically mapping out a level using simple, uncoloured meshes before you add any detail to those meshes. When creating my indie game, I jumped straight into trying to perfect my level design on the first go, and fast forward 8 months, I ended up scrapping 99% of my levels. A lot changes over the time spent developing your game, so try not to spend too much time doing the details until you've sorted your gameplay. A quick heads up before we move on to point number 3, if you're using Unreal Engine, there is actually a free asset on the marketplace called Super Grid Starter Pack, which is basically a free grey boxing tool. Ok, number 3, it's ok to lose motivation. So this is maybe more of an obvious tip, but hopefully it can reassure some of you. You're in for a long ride, and your motivation will go all over the place during the course of your development. I spent a year straight working from until I woke up to when I went to sleep, and I can tell you, some days you're just not feeling it. You'll have super sane days where you don't want to take 5 minutes for lunch, and you'll have other days where loading up your project is the last thing you want to do. So here's a bit of reassurance that even when your motivation is at its lowest, it will come back. What I did was take a week off, and even after a few days I was roaring to get back into my project. So be easy on yourself, we're all human, the motivation will come back. Number 2. Build or package regularly. If you remember any of the tips from this video, make sure you remember this one, as it's crucial during the course of your development. Package, or if you're on Unity, build your game regularly. For people who don't know, packaging is the process of turning your project into an application, and it is prone to having problems. If you don't package your game a single time before finishing it, I can almost guarantee you when you try to package the finished product, you'll be flooded with errors. I've been there myself, and there's no worse feeling in the world than finishing your project, just to find out you have to google packaging errors for the next month. So package every so often, break down the errors as they come, and everyone's having a good time. And number 1. Expect your game to take longer to produce than originally planned. So I'm sure you've heard this before, at some point in your life when you started a project, whether it be your boss, your mum, your grandma, whoever, someone out there has told you a project will take longer than you expect. And for game development, it's also true. And in my experience, it's because of the following reasons. The learning process takes longer than expected. It's hard to plan how long something will take when you haven't done all of it before. Certain areas of the development take longer than expected. Whether you know how to do something or not, certain areas of game development just love giving you delays. Animating and testing for example. And lastly, you undergo game design reworks. And this isn't a bad thing at all, as long as you've got time to redesign your game, it's only going to be better than it was. So those are just a few reasons your game might come up late, so just be aware, give yourself some extra time, so you don't stress yourself out. So that's it guys, if you have any of your own tips you'd like to share, please do drop them in the comment section below, and if you enjoyed this video, if you could drop a like and subscribe to my channel, you'd be doing me a real favour. Thanks so much for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one.